Okay, so what I've got here is a pivot table set of data. Uh, we're going to be using data like this in class quite a bit. Um, the ones you get for your homework assignments won't be this long, of course. They're only going to be like 10 or 12 in a thing, right? Where they, you know, here's some junior, sophomore, seniors, and they're spread around. You have to count them up and go, oh, look, there's 10 sophomores. Oh, look, there's 12 seniors. Um, I like to look at the data like this, and we'll be actually doing some projects with giant data sets like this. And by the way, this is not giant. This is a minor size data set, 1,000. And so I highlight it. Uh, in Google Sheets, you click on Data, and then go to Pivot Table. And this thing pops up. And you're like, ah, I deleted it. No, your stuff's still over here. It's cool. So what you can do is you can click on, let's say, uh, Math Class. And then you can click on Values and hit math class and notice that it says summarize by sum you always want to click on this and do the count a and what that does is it counts out how many kids are in algebra geometry and so forth and whatnot and there you go and so if you wanted to just make just a column graph or a bar chart you click on insert chart and it suggests a graph so it suggests this graph and I go well, it looks as good as any I guess boom there you go. Okay. Now what I can do is right click out here, put title, put a title that makes sense to me. So this is uh, math classes. I don't know, kids are taking or something. I don't know, whatever it's about. Okay, I just work here. I know this problem about. Um, you know, you can dink around a little bit. You can add axes, titles. You can put a legend or not put a legend. All that stuff's on here a little bit. Okay, you can change what the chart looks like. You can advance edit it a little bit. Um, like you can change what color things are and what the font size looks like and whatnot. It doesn't really do anything for me, but a lot of things, you know, like if you watched the other video, you, you saw that I could change it in Excel. I can change it in here too. Okay, if you want data labels, you could put values on top or not. It's up to you. Um, but that's kind of the idea. You can change your graphs around and make them as cool or uncool as you like. Um, if you want to copy this, you can just copy this baby and then paste it into a Word document. That's probably the best way to turn these in. Um, if you're going to paste it as a Word document, shut up. Uh, you want to go to Paste Special and then click on this guy here, the picture. And why do you hate me? Why do you hate me? Let's try that again. Let's hit Paste. And what? are you doing man okay good I locked up my computer okay there it was it was there I promise it was coming and oh for God's sakes okay let's try that again oops no let's try that again let's come over here okay copy okay <laughs> over here and theoretically if you hit paste it should show up paste why aren't you pasting oh for crying out loud <sighs> copy mm -hmm. so control C is how you copy in in this uh, in this thing it's old school should be able to come over here and paste it why can't I paste it this is making me angry We'll try it in Google Sheets. There's more than one way to skin a cat, people. Google Docs. <coughs> okay. Paste. Oh, that's right. There it is. Boom. Now, it's important that you do this. I didn't do it, but let me just hit the paste again. I hit paste. Did you want to link it or not link it? You want to don't link it. Okay. Because what happens is if I go and change the data that produced this chart, this chart will change. Which sometimes is not a bad idea, but other times it's a horrible idea. I had a kid one time, he was doing this, pasting stuff into a document, he's about 12 graphs into it. And every time he was changing what was happening on this data sheet over here. So he'd paste me, and when he got done he had 12 identical graphs on this page because they kept updating bad idea friends don't do that all right now what if I want to make a 
Pareto chart, as we've spoken about in my, my main video. Control C, I'm going to paste them over here. There they are. Now you notice that they, over here, they're in a pivot table. Over here, they're not in a pivot table. Okay, these are not. Okay, wait a minute. Let me back the train up. I spoke too soon. Uh, okay, I'm just going to. Okay, you know what? Just go away, you piece of garbage. Delete. Boom. Okay, let's try this again. Highlight the data. Control C. And then somewhere, it doesn't matter where, you want to go to edit and you want to do paste special and values only, okay? There you go. Now, what I can do is to those data is highlighted like that, theoretically, and I say theoretically because sometimes it's tricky, do you see how it treated these as column headings? Do you see that? It's not what I want. So if I click off of that, what I can put here is class and then like, I don't know, number of students or some such. And now if I highlight them including those titles and go over here, it gives me this. Now, assuming that both columns are highlighted, I can sort this column by lowest to high by highest to lowest, okay? And those came with me. Okay? So it was Alzheimer's 336. I just happen to have stuck it in this order now. Now when I hit insert chart now what I get is a Pareto chart because it's in an order from from highest to lowest bar so Pareto chart and again just copy that sucker and go over here into your document and then go to paste and then without linking boom so that's a Pareto chart <coughs> Now again, well I have this data, might as well make a pie chart too. Now, you can do a pie chart from the original data up here if you like, or from here. It makes no difference, okay, which one you do. Insert, pie chart, boom, nice, okay, done. Notice the default is always per percentages for Google Docs. That's not true for Excel, which is a little annoying. You change the title. Um, you can do all kinds of little different things with it here. You, know, you can change the colors of the pies. Um, you can also put on... Hmm, said you could. Maybe you can't now. You used to be able to, I think. You used to be able to go in there and actually put on the, the, the actual title geometry in Algebra 1. I know they're there, but you can be able to write them on here. Uh, but now that we have the, 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 the title right here, okay, that's fine. Okay. It's fine. As long as I can tell what's going on, you're, you're, you know, you're good to go. Okay. And then again, just copy that and paste it in. Now, um, a time series graph is another one we're going to see. And so I'm going to copy the data that I have somewhere. Nope. Yes. So I copied this data right here. Control C. Plus another sheet somewhere, and voila. Pretend that column C is not here for a moment. So I have a town, Waitsburg, and I want to graph its population versus time. And so I can see a trend. So I'm going to insert chart, and that's exactly what I want to see. I hit OK. Voila. This is the time series chart. What's happening? Waitsburg's population versus time. It really peaked in the 50s and then whatever, right, whatever. You can talk about how well it peaked and so forth and all kinds of cool things. Now, I'm going to do, I'm going to go back to some numbers that look like normal numbers here for these guys because I'd like them to be similar. And I'll change them back later. Whatever. What I can do is I can actually make two on the same graph. So I highlight them all, insert, chart, yeah, look at that. And so it tells me which one's which. Dayton and Waitsburg, I would say population or something, something that means a little more descriptive than that. But there I have two time series graphs, okay, on the same one. And, my, and you know, you might want to do that because maybe you're graphing something where the one thing maybe causes the other or maybe it's creating a problem. 
maybe you want to go at it like that. Now, what would happen if these numbers were all considerably larger? And so you're thinking, wow, that's going to get gross. Yeah, probably. So, um, look what happened to Waitsburg. It's basically flat. I can't tell what's happening. Okay. So if you right click and you go here to uh, axes, you see this? You can actually put in um, oops, advanced edit. And if you go into advanced edit, I believe it is. pause you so you have to sit there and stare at me all right remember where it was now so right click advanced edit customization down here it says all lines right here under series you click on that select Waitsburg and I want to graph Waitsburg on the right axis okay and then hit OK now here's where it's a little wonky and funky because I want to label my axes so I want to do the right axis title, and then you just type in up here, you know, Waitsburg. And then over, and then you can right click and do, you know, axis title, left axis, vertical title, boom. And then Dayton or something, right? So it's obvious what it is we're talking about, you know, is it, you know, different, like, you know, but it could be a variety of things, but that way I can keep track of which one I'm supposed to be reading on which axes. Okay, so that's time series graphs. Um, another one that I wanted to talk about was, yeah, no, no, yeah, I'm gonna get rid of this guy, and I'm gonna get rid of that. Actually, I'm gonna leave it alone. I'm just gonna come up here to my regular time, my my regular pivot table. And I'm going to get rid of this mess for a moment. I'm going to get rid of this mess too. I just don't want to see it anymore. Uh, for gosh sakes, man. Go away. Okay, fine. Ah, uh, that's gross. Um, okay, I don't know. I think it'll probably be okay. Anyway, so if I click back on my pivot table. Suppose I want to do feeling about math and feeling about math, and again change that to count A. But let's add, shall we, column for gender, perhaps. Now what I can do is copy that set of data, Control C. Over here somewhere, I'm going to go edit, and I want to paste special values only. Now what I can do is keep this data highlighted, and what I can do is I can go in and you know insert a bar graph, just like that, and I can then look at it and compare, you know, male versus female and their feelings about math. Don't leave this chart title like that; it's gross. Male and female feelings about math or something. I'd probably do it feelings by math, feelings about math by gender or some such so that it makes sense. Okay, oh, fiddle faddle. Apparently, I didn't have to hit enter. Anyway, feelings about math by gender. Bam. Okay, and there it goes. So I can see who's which. So, stack bar chart like that. All right, the last thing I want to talk about, and to do this, you're going to want to go to Add-ons. You want to go to Get Add-ons. And you're going to want to type in XL Minor. And yet, that's enough. It'll find it. And it's this fella right here, and it says Free. Hit, um, I just click on the Free, I think, and it'll add it. And when it's done, it'll show up under here, right here, like this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my original data set. 
Okay, and I'm going to grab the height, which is this whole column. I'm going to copy it, Control C. I'm only doing this because in, in Google Sheets, it makes more sense to do it this way. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to arrange those in order from lowest to highest, since they may already be. They're not. So 58 is my lowest. 80 is my highest. That's 22. Let's say I want five bars. It's 4.4, meaning I'm going to count by probably five. You can't do four, and, and you won't count by 4.4s. That won't be enough. You have to go bigger. So five is good. Six would work. Eight would be fine. Ten would probably be fine. Whatever. But if I use uh, bars that are five wide, I should be good to go and cover it all. So I'm going to start at 57 and a half. And then 62 and a half. And I could do this count by fives, but there's an easier way. If you do equals this guy plus five. And then drag it down. Now it's one, two, three, four, five, six numbers, but in between them is where your bar lies. So one, two, three, four, five. These are what we call our bin ranges. And these are our actual input data. So when you do this, you're going to go to Excel Minor Tool Pack. And over here, Histogram shows up. And then it throws this dialog box open. So the input range. Now, you, this is how you want to do it. You want to highlight it first. This is a little annoying, this, pro, this deal is. It's, you highlight it first before you go click into the input range. Now, you could also type it in, and I'll show you how to do that with the bin range instead, okay? But I highlight it first. And then I click in the input range. Boom. Now I'm going to click in the, this thing, and it automatically sticks in there. You're like, what are you doing? So you delete that. Now my bin ranges happens to be in, so I'm just going to click right here. I'm going to type in B, oh, for God's sakes. They are in B2 to B7, am I right? So they're in this column right here from B2 down to B7. I'm not using labels. That is, I didn't highlight the height up here. It's best if you do not, I've found over the years, okay? Now, I click somewhere else. Notice, watch, I'm clicking not in the box, okay? Now, I'm going to come back out here and click somewhere. I'm going to click right there. And then I'm going to click on chart output. And I'm usually I click on this one, too, while I'm at it, okay? And this is what the thing spits out at me here in a minute. Spits out this set of data over here, by the way. It says that between below 57 and a half, nobody had showed up. Between 57 and a half and 62 and a half, I've got 44 people. Between here and here, I've got 422 people, and so on and so on and so on. And that's graphed over here like so. Like so. Okay. And it would be nice if I could slam these guys together. But in Google Sheets, there's no way to slam those guys together. I wish there was. If you could find a way to do it, I'd be a very happy camper. But it's just not possible. From what I've been able to find over the years, though, it's very it's very annoying. You just want to get angry about it, but you can't. So, whatever. Well, I guess you can, but they're doing good. So, anyway. Um, ordinarily, I want my bars slapped together. But in Google Sheets, you can't do it. Again, this red thing here, it's called an ogive, um, and I've mentioned it in the in the other video. Um, just says that by the time you get to the you know the end of the first bar, you've got a certain percentage showed up, and so on and so on. We don't use it a lot, but we use it from time to time. So that it's just nice that this computer already does that for us.